I love the heart of God. He's so good. I'm not crying just because she told a good story. I'm crying because of what the Lord does. He doesn't want you to stay the same. He wants to transform you. He doesn't want you in that place where there's no hope, where there's no light, where you're just comfortable in what you're doing. He's so good. So I have a, a message from the Lord today. Most of the times that I came up, it was, it was very difficult for me. I would get nervous and all these things, but my mindset going into this was very different. <clears throat> because I'm not here, I'm, it's not my message. I want to speak what's on the Lord's heart tonight, or tonight, today. <clears throat> but today I'm going to be reading from Matthew 25, 14 through 30, in the New King James Version. <clears throat> it's the parable of the talents. <clears throat> and it says... Okay, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one of them he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had one, who had received one, went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your, uh, your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ooh, heavy, heavy scripture, huh? <laughs> Whenever I go into the scripture, one thing I always do is I want to know why it's here. Why does, is this scripture in here and why is Jesus talking about it? And so I like to break it down as well. <clears throat> God First of all, God is always very intentional with what he is saying in the scripture. So the only time the word talent is used in the New Testament is mostly by Matthew and another time in Revelation. This parable is also told in Luke, but Luke uses the word minas. Minas is a currency used by the Greeks, and that's in Luke 19, 11 through 26. The Jews knew what talents were, and the Greeks knew what minas were. It was spoken to different groups of people, so the Lord was intentional because he wanted them to understand what he was talking about in that moment. And we, I said, a minus is currency, but a talent actually is not a currency. In Revelation 16.21, it talks about a stone that had a weight of a talent. And in Matthew 18, Jesus actually uses the parable of the unforgiving servant, and he talks about the talent again. A talent, unlike the name, is not like a talent like you have, like a gifting, like a talent show. (laughs) It's a weight, like I said. But it's equivalent to about 6,000 denarii. Or a a denarii is a day's wage, and 6,000 of those makes up one talent. And that would take 20 years to get. 
So, so the master gave them 20 years worth of money. And I looked online, I did some research, and I found a calculator that converts talents into US dollars today. And it's an insane amount. A talent today would be worth $522,000. That would change a lot of our lives here, right? <laughs> I would do so much ministry with that, you know what I mean? <laughs> so he gives, the, he gives the bad servant $522,000. The, uh, the second one, he gives two talents, which is about a million dollars. And then to the one who got received five, $2.6 million. Now, any intelligent person, even the unintelligent, not that there's any in the room, why would you give 522000 to someone who wasn't worthy? Who would do that? Are, it, was he a fool to do that? No, he wasn't. He saw, they were his servants, he saw how they worked constantly. He knew their abilities more than they did, and he knew that he could trust them. In verse 14, it says he gave according to their own abilities. Those three who had received the money were the most qualified of everybody in that, uh, in that household. Even though this is a story about talents and stewarding money, it's not just a story. This is a parable. There's something about the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is trying to teach to us. It's not just a money issue. The reason the third servant failed is because he was afraid. And his fear kept him from walking into his full created purpose. In verse 25, one of the first things he says when his master returns is that he was afraid. I knew, I was afraid, so I buried it. The mindset that the servant had when he received the money determined his outcome. I'm going to say that again. The mindset you have going into any situation, whether it's good or bad, will determine your outcome. So we see an example of this in Matthew 14. When the disciples were in the storm and Jesus is walking on water, he's about to pass them by. Peter actually says to him in verse 28, Lord, if it is you, let me walk on water. But he does but he begins to sink. His mindset kept him from walking his full created purpose. I'm convinced that this is not about money. It's about your mindset. No. And one thing about God is he always, he allows us to face trials and tribulations and receive blessings because he wants us to succeed. God will take any situation that you're in, the enemy tried to take from you and turn it for your good. Now, this isn't what I'm saying, okay? I'm not saying God makes bad things happen to you for you to learn a lesson. That's wrong. The Lord doesn't make you sick. The Lord doesn't lie to you. He wouldn't take anything away from you because he is a good father. In John 10.10, 10, it says, the enemy, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to bring life and life more abundantly. God doesn't give us bad situations, but he'll use any situation you're in, no matter what, you're, what situation you're in. And it talks about this more in James 1. He believes in all his servants because he's formed you in your mother's womb. He knows exactly what you'll do, and he can trust you. But the big question is, do you trust yourself? We trust the Lord, but can you trust yourself? A few weeks ago, I went to an aquarium. And it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of different fish there. And I, it, was, it was beautiful. I want to go again, really. But in the beginning of it all, actually, there, were, there was a penguin exhibit. And I was looking at the penguins, and I felt sorry for them. Because penguins are known for making long migratory journeys to breeding grounds and feeding grounds hundreds, maybe thousands of miles in the Antarctic. Oh, amen. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh oh thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. But the pink oh <laughs> okay. Sorry, right. sorry. Give me a second. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. okay, the penguin were in that situation, and I felt sorry for them. 
I was sorry because they would never reach their full creative purpose. Right. 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 So I talked to one of the workers there and the worker told me that every single one of those penguins in there, when they were eggs, they were going to die. They were abandoned oh, and wow. they were left to die out there. Wow. They were only, they were raised in captivity and that's all they knew. Yeah. Yeah. They knew nothing else. They knew what they were missing out on anything. They didn't think they were missing out on anything. They got their food, they had their place to stay and that's it and they were fine with that. Mm. <clears throat> Christians, mm -hmm. They constantly put their spiritual lives in captivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. They become safe. Mm -hmm. They're okay with just getting their food, going home, sleeping, and going into work and whatever they did. Just like the bad servant, he received the talent, and he was okay with just burying it. Yeah. He was okay with staying there. Mm -hmm. And when the master returned, he was not pleased with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the master returned, would he be pleased with your work, mm -hmm. the work of your hands and everything that you've done? Even with Nayeli, she had a choice. Right. And we thank God that there's a choice. Right. She had a choice whether to stay or to go back. Uh -huh. right. She had a choice of whether to walk in the newness or life of life or to go back to what's comfortable right. and stay in captivity and right. never reach her full created purpose. Right. Come on. The things the Lord put on my heart tonight today. I feel like a lot of people have given up. Yeah. There are people who've given up. Who say, give it to the next person. I don't need it. Give it to the one who had five. He got five. Give him more. I don't deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not worthy of it. The Lord sees you as worthy. He yeah. loves you. He doesn't right. see anything right. except the blood of Jesus that covers you. Yeah. He doesn't see you based yeah. on your capabilities. Right. He saw you for the price that you were worth. And that was the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Right. Right. So today, what is keeping you from that? Yeah. Is it your mindset? Who right. are you obeying? Right. In Romans 6, 16, it says, that who you serve, that's your master. Yeah. Yeah. Have you made fear your master right. to keep you in captivity? Yeah. Have you believed the lies of the enemy that said you're not enough? You're not going to be good enough. You're going to fail. Don't do anything. Bury it. Hide away. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. As we go into this next season of revival, right. the Lord doesn't just want attendees. He doesn't want people right. in captivity right. coming right. in. Right. Right. The Lord wants every single person to be a part of what he's doing. Yeah. It's the body of Christ, not the body of a few. We're all called the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, oh, man. The Lord is so good. He only sees you for what you're worth. And you are yeah. worth the blood. And you are capable. And you are worthy. Amen. You could be glad because Ooh. when the master returns, you could say to him, good, he, you could say to him, you've been faithful with what yes. you've had. And he would yeah. say, good and faithful yeah. servant, Amen. enter yes. into the joy of the yes. Lord. Yes. Yes. So right now, I just want to take a moment to self-examine. Mm -hmm. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes. Are there any places in your heart where you've even surrendered it to fear, to anxiety, mm -hmm. to anything that doesn't look like the Lord's? Mm -hmm. If the master came to you today and said, what have you done with my gifts? Would he be able to say you were worthy? Would you be, would he find you worthy of what you have? Take a moment and look in those deep places in your heart. This isn't for me. This isn't for me. This is for you, for you and your relationship with God. He desires to, for you to walk in the fullness of life. Now, I just want to pray. Lord, I thank you for each and every single person in the room today. I thank you that you've called every single person in the room and that they are worthy of your gifting, of your talents, of your wealth, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for removing the lies, Lord, that we believe. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you call us yeah. worthy. Yeah. I thank you that you have chosen us. Yeah. And you've given us every tool that we need for success, Lord. Yeah. Lord, right now, I just call out those things that were hidden. Those mindsets of fear, mm -hmm. of anxiety. Those things that say, I'm too old. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'll never be like this person or that person. Lord, I rebuke those lies. Yes. I call them out in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. I plead the blood over our yes. minds and in our hearts, Lord. And I thank you for your spirit that goes before us. That, and that as we walk out of this room today, Lord, that we can walk with joy and hope, Lord, that we've been faithful with what you've given us. 
And I thank you, just, Lord, for just restoring any of those places where the enemy has taken, where you have surrendered, or where you have buried, Lord. I thank you that today is a new day, yeah. that you can walk in the newness and the fullness of life and use your talents and your good things to the fullness of what God believes you to be. Yeah. He doesn't see you as a failure. Lord, I thank you you don't see us as failures. And I thank you that we are called and we are all worthy to be called children of God, Lord. Amen. I thank you for your goodness. And I thank you for everything that you're doing. And let us not be complacent, Lord. Let us not get comfortable. I thank you for waking us up in the night. Even if it's the enemy waking us up in the night, Lord, we'll give those situations to you, Lord. Even in those places where I haven't seen any light, where there's only darkness, Lord, I thank you that I can invite you in, Lord. Yes. I thank you that I can yes. carry your presence. And we bless you, Lord. We thank you. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.